Hi, this is Shuva Rahim, and this is my Mixed Media Critique on Audacity, which is an audio recording and editing software program. I'm also including a little bit about Rode RE as part of this critique. If you do a search in your browser for Audacity, it will lead you directly to a website called audacity.sourceforge.net. And um, a little ways toward the top, um, you'll see this green download button. And that's what you would press to install the program onto your computer. This program is a free download. Now, when you open up the software um, to Audacity, you'll see this tools panel at the very top. And one thing to note is with these bristled edges here, you can actually move the, the panels um, however you want. And so this is something that you have a little bit of freedom to, to do. Now usually in Audacity, the upper left side has your main player controls, which include pause, play, stop, skip to start, skip to end, and record. The second series of um, control panels, the key thing to know here is this I-beam, um, and that's really serves as a cursor in Audacity. So you want to select that tool when you're working on the timeline. Now these two sections here um, are your recording and playback um, playback streams and so you want to keep an eye on these two meters. The one with the microphone is your input and the one with the sound icon is your playback and you can also stretch these timelines um, as you see fit. Um, so now I'm going to record a short sentence and then I'll play it back so you can see the sound of my voice reflected in the green bars. Uh, before I say anything, I'm actually going to start the recording with three seconds of silence. Today is Saturday, July 15th. Now I'm going to go ahead and play the audio back. Saturday, July 15th. Uh, you'll notice in the audio that uh, there are relatively flat lines during the silence and so I'm going to get rid of that and what I'm going to do is I'm going to make sure that this I-beam is selected. I've clicked on that and when you're actually working on the timeline you want to make sure that you're actually in this gray area not at um, in this uh, margin area where you see that green. So make sure you're actually in in this flat area so that way you're making the selection properly. So I'm going to go ahead and select this um, flat line here and I want to get rid of it. I can either hit the delete button on my computer on my keyboard or um, click on the scissors icon and trim that out. So I'm going to go ahead and click on this cut and then I'll do the same thing on this side as well. And I'm going to cut that end there. Now um, in my experience working with audio, um, I've always worked in Adobe Premiere Pro, and it's relatively easy, I think, to cut audio in Pro as well as Audacity. Uh, now, if you are in a quiet environment with little to no white noise, I think recording should not be a big issue. However, when you're listening to the sound of your voice, you may notice things that may not necessarily jump out at other people. Um, or you may notice things in the audio file that just look a little too, um, too extreme. And so one thing that is not as intuitive to fix an audio is bad audio. Um, in Audacity is bad audio. So there's tutorials I found online that you can go through to fix this. Um, I just want to go over a few things that I learned from one of the videos that I think are worth mentioning. Um, and of course this is assuming you may notice some inconsistencies in terms of peaks in your um, file that shouldn't be there. So the first thing is to normalize the sound. And to do this, um, I'm going to go ahead and just select the clip and um, go to Effect and then go down to Normalize. And ideally, um, your normalization should be um, less than zero. Um, so this is a, at a good number, negative 3.5. Um, you also want to make sure the normalized serial channels independently are checked. Um, and I can, you know, you can always preview the sound. And in most cases, it doesn't really make a whole lot of difference if you preview it or not. 
but I'm going to go ahead and click OK. And then the second thing, and you'll notice when I normalize that you have this, this other shade of color here that's um, overlapping um, some of the audio, some of the original audio. And so the other thing I can do is improve, um, to improve the sound is equalization. So I'm going to select uh, this again and go to effect and go down to equalization. And equalization means you're boosting and reducing the selected um, uh, selected frequencies for a more neutral sound. And to do this, I'm going to go um, again to the filter tab, the equalization, and then use these trouble bars here to just sort of make sure it's more of a natural incline um, on this graph at the top. So I'm just going to make some minor, minor movements here to make sure that this is as close to um, straight as possible. And then I'm going to click OK. And then the third thing I'm going to do is do a compressor um, compressor option. So under Effects, I'm going to go down to um, Compressor. Now, Compressor is also known as DRC, which means uh, Dynamic Range Compression. And what this does is reduce loud sounds and increases soft sounds for an overall smoother sound. So I'll, I'll go to Effects again and Compressor. I'll see this graph, and normally I'm not really making any changes. This is a fairly, um, you know, quiet place I'm recording in. My voice seems pretty consistent, um, but I'm going to click OK here. And then those are some things just to kind of improve the sound quality. And again, um, if I wanted to be more specific with this, I could go in and kind of look at what these peaks are and maybe just um, do like a, a compressor here and um, you know maybe a normal or an equalization um, a little bit a little bit more of an equalization move for that particular um, selection um, or even a normalization and maybe I might want to take this down to 5.0, 5 5.0, and, and then see how that sounds. Saturday, July 15th. So again, this is one of those things that's so detailed that you might want to spend some time with if you do notice some peaks in your audio. Um, after you're done with your file, you want to go to File, and then Export Audio. And you want to save it um, as a WAV file, a 16-bit version. And that's really, um, that's what's preferred over an MP3 file. Um, so the WAV is recommended, uh, which um, the reason for that is it's really equivalent to a TIFF file for audio in that you're not losing any data. Um, an MP3 file, while it's fine and it's common, um, compared to the WAV file format, you are compressing the data in an mp3, um, thus possibly resulting in a lower quality file. So I'm going to save this as a wave and just call this test. And so I'm going to hit save. I'm going to go ahead and say yes because I've actually done this a few times. Um, and you can add metadata to the file if you want. I'm just going to click OK here. And so that's pretty much all I have on audio. Um, I've not used Audacity before, but although um, just from my few, uh, you know, my you know, my short time with it, I do like it, and I think it definitely is worth using. Um, I do want to mention that there is another audio recording tool I've used frequently, which is an app you can download on your phone, and that's called um, Rode R E R a Rode Rec R E. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and kind of shift gears here to see if I can show you what that would look like. Um, let's see here. I don't think I can show my screen or show me. So anyway, what, what Rode RE does is in this app here, you would click on the app and you would click on this plus sign and hit record. Um, it allows me to convert the audio into a WAV file on the phone. And then what I actually do is I send it to um, SoundCloud. So this is my SoundCloud account. 
um, in SoundCloud, um, I'll have the audio file in SoundCloud, but you cannot download the file from this website. So it won't let you do that. Um, and so what I do is actually say, for example, I want this audio um, as a file that I can actually work with. So um, I will click on the share icon and it, and it gives me this website that's specific to this particular uh, audio file. I'm going to hit control C to copy it. And then I go to a website called um, anything to mp3.com and I will paste that particular recording here um, on this on this white bar. Now uh, this website it does look like kind of like a scammy website but it's not. So you paste the web address in this white bar and you hit convert and this thing comes up so don't be alarmed by this. Um, you want to ignore this this thing here because uh, uh, right here you'll see the download from anything to mp3 dot com site is is working and then it gives you this green link that says convert your um, file to an mp3 and so then I can just click on that and then it will download to my computer so hopefully this is helpful for those of you who may be considering this um, this program or Audacity um, and again Rode a Rec RE um, or Rode Rec LE, I should say, um, is more mobile friendly. Um, thanks, and I look forward to your comments.